This is a sight and a sound that underpins our agricultural economy. Given their importance, it makes sense for farmers, and others of course, to help protect some of the nation's hardest workers. The Trees for Bees program sees bee-friendly plants strategically selected and planted to provide an important source of nutrition during critical periods of the year, such as autumn, winter and spring. If we haven't got bees, we haven't got, we haven't got a crop. So hopefully we can attract better bees, um, so we'll get better pollination, so we'll get better, better yield. Dean Pye's bee-friendly plants are not yet 12 months old, but already the mid-Canterbury arable farmer has high hopes for them. And I thought it was just silly just planting um, a tree that's only going to give us shelter benefit. Um, by doing this we're going to get a, a bit of both, um, was the idea, and yeah, create a, a home for the bees in the winter. Many astute farmers share the same logic. The reason to be involved with the bee, Trees for Bees project was um, sort of tickle my fancy and sort of something I've sort of been wanting to do for a while to actually plant trees that were beneficial to the bees because um, I rely on them for pollination and um, there's also other benefits for other insects as well not just bees. Bee friendly plants lie in a new irrigation pond on the Evans farm and in doing so provide nutrition in an otherwise barren winter landscape. With the selection we've got there's um, pollen available all year but when we want the bees to be working their crops so there's pollen available right through to sort of November and then it starts again in February so um, the bees are going living there in the winter, spring and then going away pollinating the crops and coming back there in the autumn. We can see a few species that are now in flower. We have viburnum, viburnum tinus, we have rosemary, we have hebe, Salicifolia, we have tree lucerne. So just to show that there are alternatives that we can plan to in, in improve the, the nutrition of, of the bees. And remember, winter is the time that bees traditionally struggle to find food sources. They need lots of pollen in autumn to store in the hive for getting through the winter. Without it they could die, thus susceptible to disease and they go into the important summer pollination period in poor condition. It's about getting the bee numbers up, getting, their, getting healthier bees. It's about um, improving the agriculture economy so pollination services are improved with more bees and with stronger bees. And it's also about protecting the environment, not using weeds for bee food. We, we want to try to get native plants and non-weedy introduced species. Arborist Stephen Brailsford then helps by selecting, arranging and planting the plants that are most suitable for each farm site. This is done using the Trees for Bees plant list of trees and shrubs that have high levels of protein in the pollen. The list is selected to suit the purposes and ideas that the farmer wants for their farm operation. Well this is all focused on the bees, you know, this is, this is all plants that uh, have a, uh, a flower on it that they can get some nectar and some pollen off um, in the autumn and through the winter and into the spring so that the bees can go into the, or the bee hives can go into the uh, summer working period where they've got to be out and amongst the crops, um, nice and strong. We haven't got anything here that'll give them any real food supply over the summer months when they've got to be working out there. It's just really so that they've got something to live with uh, over the winter. The winter time um, in this sort of industrialised agricultural environment's got really no food for bees. Um, you know, over that time. In the, in the summer when they're growing all their crops, then there's food out there for them. But uh, this is all about food for the winter. Here at Staveley in mid-Canterbury, beekeepers and farmers James and Joe Callahan are busy planning. They've just removed a typical Canterbury shelter belt from their property. Now the Trees for Bees team are here to help develop a new bee-friendly environment. If we can't lead from the front, how are we going to get other farmers on board? So, you know, I know the benefits of, of the pollen uh, for the bees and um, yeah, it, it's common sense really. If I can lead the way or we can lead the way then um, it's got to be a good thing for other, other people to get on board with. The key thing here is to find out what are the current uh, species that are supplying pollen and then we identify what are the critical periods where there is not enough and we fill that gap with suitable species. 
species both native and exotic that are specifically selected and planted to assist this unassuming and undervalued part of our agriculture.